Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Galant Bodybuilding, Montreal. And today I thought I'd talk to you about pyramid training. So a lot of people talk about pyramid training as, uh, you know, the, the cornerstone of progressive overload, or at least one of the techniques that people use. And I have done pyramid training for certain compound exercises at certain times. So you don't see me do it a lot, but sometimes it is a useful tool in order to get ready to lift heavier weight than you've lifted before and to do it safely, meaning you're ensuring that you are properly warmed up and calibrated to lift heavier weights. Now, a lot of times what people will do is that they will pyramid up almost every workout to something close to their one rep max. That's what a lot of people will do, especially beginners and stuff. But this would not necessarily be the right way to pyramid up in weight. And I know that powerlifters will have their own specific strategies. A lot of times they'll pyramid up to one rep with say 85% of their one rep max or 80% and then work their way up to almost 100% when they get close to a meet or a competition. Or they may go through a four week to eight week cycle of training so that way they're uh, going above and beyond what their one rep max is by the end of their training cycle. But for me, the way I do it is just that if I haven't used a heavier weight for a period of time, such as with bench press, like maybe I haven't done anything above 275 or 295 for a period of time on the bench, I may do glorified warm up sets and then start doing some straight sets once I've worked myself up into new territory or territory that I haven't touched for a long time. So for instance, today, I did uh, a few sets of 135, just easy, right? I just, you know, do 15 reps or whatever, just to get the blood in there. And then I went to 225 and did a couple sets just to calibrate my muscles in my chest and my shoulders like I usually do. It's like my warm-ups. I don't take the sets to failure, of course, because I am trying to conserve my energy in order to be able to lift those heavier weights. And then I went to a weight of 275, which I've regularly been doing lately. And I did a set with 275 with just a few reps because the whole point is for me not to take the warm-up sets to failure. So you're doing multiple warm-up sets, sometimes you know as much as six or seven warm-up sets before you actually get into the peak weight of your workout. And then from there I went to 295 and did a few reps. And then I went to 305 and did uh, a couple reps. And once I got to 305, I did multiple sets of just a couple reps, even though I probably could have gotten three or four reps with that, if not a bit more, depending on my groove or not. But because I knew my groove was off and that I would be wasting energy by not necessarily having the proper balance and the proper proprioception in place, I only did sets of two reps. And I did about three to four sets with this. Now the reason why is that I'm just trying to calibrate the body to get used to or to get acclimated to holding on to that weight and going through whatever range of motion I've deemed proper for that exercise. And you can tell by the second or third set when you're using heavier weights that you somehow become more efficient and the body becomes used to it in some way. So it's not necessarily as hard on you as if you just took that first set right to failure, right? Because you're you're not wasting energy or going through micro imbalances which cause all sorts of little strains or let's just say muscular damage. So the whole point isn't muscular damage in this case. The whole point is just to refine the groove and therefore you become comfortable working with a new weight. And then once that comfort is established over a period of time, then you can start doing hypertrophy type of sets with this type of weight. You start to get more reps, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe you lower the weight just by 5% and you're able to get more reps than before. So sometimes working with the same weight, such as like say 275, 
sometimes you'll hit a plateau with how many reps you can do. And when you push into a little bit heavier territory for a period of time, maybe it's only one workout or two workouts, or maybe you do one really heavy workout a week and then come back down by five or 10% in your weight, what will happen is that you'll notice that you'll be able to add more reps in a, in a better, more efficient way than if you just stuck to just doing 275 to failure every single workout. So I've been stuck at a 10 to 12 rep range in 275. So I know that sometimes it's time for a bit of a shock or to lift a little bit heavier, not, not extreme, but just a bit heavier once in a while, just to push the body into a different territory or to at least access certain fast switch muscle fibers and nervous system recruitment, right? Because once you can recruit that nervous system more efficiently, you're going to then be able to get more reps when you're using a little bit lighter weight. So this is the strategy around what I'm doing. Now, there are lots of ways to pyramid up in weight. And some exercises, I would say, are more dangerous than others once you start working into super heavy rep ranges. But the truth is about pyramiding is that it doesn't have to be uh, a super high percentage of your one rep max. It, it might just be you pyramiding up to weight, which is the weight you feel is the best way to challenge the body at that time. It doesn't have to be 90% or 95% or 100% of your one rep max. Maybe it's only 70% or 65% because you find once you get into 80% of your one rep max, you start to notice that you get more joint pain or problems, right? So it's always about safety first. It's always about avoiding injury first. And second, pushing into territory which may be uncomfortable or a little bit more challenging and therefore you can get more muscular strength. Now naturally I do this kind of thing when it comes down to most of my exercises as far as I do several warm-ups before it feels like my body is ready to get into the heavier weight. You can see during my flat dumbbell press workout just a few days ago that I did, I haven't uploaded it yet or anything, but what I'm going to do is show you what I was doing. I was doing 75 pounders for a few warm-ups because I felt a bit tight. Then I went to the 100 pounders because that's the only uh, that's the only other dumbbell I have that's above the 70s and I did a couple sets there and then what I did was I moved into my new dumbbells that I just got from Bells of Steel. I got these 120 pound dumbbells and there'll be a link in the description if you want to check out their equipment or whatever but I got the 120 pound dumbbells for a few sets right so those were the work sets that I was going to do but I needed to do a couple extra warm-ups just to make sure that my body was ready for that so the point is with these warm-ups is that you don't want to take them to failure and you don't want to wear yourself out but you do want to do enough reps and enough stretching so that you are able to recruit the muscles and to alleviate any tightness or any sort of idiosyncrasies that are going on in the muscles and the ligaments and tendons right so you don't have to overstretch in these movements by any means, but you definitely want to make sure that there's enough blood flow and warmth in there. So that way, when you are challenging the body, if anything unexpected happens, you're far less likely to get a tear or a muscular pull. Mountain. So yeah, this is how I pyramid train. I hope this helps you out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalgalandbodybuilding.com and thanks to the Patreon supporters and take care for now. And yeah, make sure you check out the podcast on Patreon. The link is in the description. Mountain. Natural land.